Okay, I'm on live. Hello, hello there. My crafty friends, welcome to my weekly uh, Teach Me Tuesday Facebook Live. I had all kinds of funny things going on with this um, Facebook, and I kept thinking it was on, and then it wasn't on, but I think I am now. And I'm so happy to be with you here today. I'm just turning off my notifications. Um, my grandchildren are still here from the UK. Today's their last day. And um, so they leave super early tomorrow morning. And so I delayed a little bit today. I knew that I could have just canceled out today and y'all would have totally understood, but they're actually going to see my daughter for a little bit. So I thought, okay, I'll just jump on a little bit later. The kids will all be gone. We thankfully got them out this morning up to the park and uh, Griff is two and a half, Felicity is eight months. We got them up to the park before the heavens opened. We are having a, an awesome, awesome rain here in San Antonio, which is always an excellent thing. We always need rain and we're getting some really good rain this week. Temperatures have come down, which I've been really grateful for. It's helped the kids. They're used to much, much cooler temperatures. They live in the north of England in rural North England, just outside of Durham. Uh, they're very close to Durham. So uh, let me grab my computer here so that I'm not able to, I comment, I see comments coming, but I can't actually tap into them. So I have a lot to share with you today. And uh, let me talk to you a little bit about that before we get going. And I will welcome everybody. Um, tomorrow is actually the last day for the spring or January to June mini catalog. Hey, Susie and Jill and Laura and Melissa. Gail is here and Susan. Welcome, welcome. Um, you know, our January to June mini catalog has traditionally been one that had a lot of things that carry over into the big annual catalog. Hey, Mary, I'm glad you're with us. Um, and, there, and it's true again this time. A lot of those things carried into the annual catalog and I'm going to be showcasing the art gallery suite today. There's a lot in the suite and although the stamps and the dies and the embossing folder carried into the new catalog, there's a couple of elements that didn't. Number one being that it's no longer a bundle in the new catalog. So you can still get the art gallery, um, the art gallery stamps and the floral gallery dies, but you can't get the 10% savings. So today, or actually tomorrow, I guess, is the last day to get that. And then the gorgeous designer series paper, which is one of my favorite parts of the suite, will no longer be available after tomorrow. So I know I've got a couple of extra packs and I'll show you why. I did some scrapbooking with this and um, so I'm going to bring the, uh, bring the camera down in just a second. Welcome Valerie and Diane and yes, Susie, when we were last, you're, you're talking about enjoying Durham Cathedral. It's amazing. And so the kids are very close there. And we were there two years ago at Thanksgiving and were able to, they had already started their Christmas services. So we were able to go to a, um, well, I guess it was a, um, what do you think? I can't think of the name of it, but it's the run up to Christmas. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm brain dead right now. Um, you'll probably be able to tell me, but it was, it was a, it was a carol service that they were having. It was Advent. It was an, ad, uh, I think they had already started Advent and they were doing a carol service. So we got to go to that. Uh, Griff was just a baby at the time and they were doing their little outdoor markets as part of the whole cathedral experience. It was absolutely lovely. And, um, oh, sorry about that, Melissa, that I got frozen. It's probably Lessons and Carols. That's it, Susie. We're having really strong rains here right now, so that may be why we're freezing. Um, so I beg your patience for that today. Um, it may not be just right now. It may end up happening another time or two. I think if you'll just kind of hang in there, it should come back. So um, I am going to go ahead and bring the camera down and get busy because we got a lot to cover. Okay, it is Teach Me Tuesday, which I do every week on Tuesday at two o'clock. Today I delayed the three so I could accommodate the grandkids. And let's see, I think I need to bring this down a little bit more. There we go, so you're not looking at my tummy. Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to show you. Let's start with the spring catalog. 
this is the beautiful suite that I am highlighting today, and I absolutely love it. I think it's just gorgeous. And I'm gonna play with the lights here a little bit to see if that, yeah, I think that's better. Um, so there's a lot to love in this. Um, now the one element I haven't shown you or worked with you yet is these gold, this gilded leafing, which is in the annual catalog. Really kind of fun way to do uh, gold leafing. Um, but I love, love, love this designer series paper. The stamps are gorgeous. I mean, art gallery, they're very appropriately named in my opinion because they are very artsy looking. But there's a lot of fun things you can do with them that are not overly artsy. So if you like that artsy look, you're in business here. But there's a lot of directions it can go as well. So let me show you about that before I show you what we're gonna do today for Teach Me Tuesday. So I do a scrapbook box every month, and I'm super late even getting it talked about for June because I got, I got really behind with my trip in May, and I'm still playing catch up on a couple of things. But in that, um, in my scrapbook box, you get a pack of designer series paper every month. You get, um, well, every month that you take it. Um, and then you get an embellishment, and then there's four of us that are on a design team, and it's North American um, top demonstrators. So it's me and Jen Pitta from the U.S., and then Karina and Rose from Canada. And so you get the pack of designer series paper, you get a uh, selection of 12 by 12 papers, and then you get um, a lot of bits and bobs. So we give you a lot of die cuts and uh, extra cardstock pieces and things. And um, then we also give you, each of us creates two layouts. So this, well, actually, this is not my layout. Let me get two. These are some of my England pictures from when my kids were small. So um, this was, yeah, this was one layout here. So we show you different ways to here. I've used the stamps directly on my cardstock for a subtle look here. And then some of the designer paper. And then some of this I've done photo mats on, some of it not. And um, with each of us giving you a couple of two different um, two-page spreads, and then we do kind of a wild card extra. So sometimes it is a single 12 by 12 page, sometimes it's a smaller page, sometimes it's a card, but I did all scrapbooking with this, but I'm just kind of showing you that the back side of these papers is really cool. Um, Actually, you know what? I think th these these actually kind of go a lot of different ways. So here again, showing you how you can take these stamps and do tone on tone stamping and get a lot of really cool um, action for your scrapbooking. Um, you can see here. I think I might need to pull the camera up a little bit. There we go. So you can see these a little bit better. Um, these very bold floral patterns, but then you also have these really subtle patterns on the other side that are, um, oh, these are the bold, these are the bold floral patterns. Here's one of the subtle patterns where it looks like a paint, uh, paint palette, um, palette knife artwork that's been done here. Um, this was my, uh, these were all pictures of when we lived in England and see how you can go in just a totally different direction. This was an anniversary dinner that I'm showing here. And then I did this page. Um, this was the last time we saw my mother-in-law before she passed away. And, um, again, using one of those real, uh, really cool background pieces that is, um, more of a palette knife, um, artwork. But look how I love the tone on tone stamping here. I think it adds a lot of texture without adding any, um, a lot of textural interest without adding any bulk. So um, this was my scrapbook pages for Art Gallery. And I will, um, if you're on my email list, you'll find out about the uh, scrapbook box for June and July. And it is only, it's only $35. You get, uh, like I said, a selection of the 12 by 12 paper cardstock. You get the full pack of paper, of designer paper. You get an embellishment, and then you get a whole lot of bits and bobs, and then you get the, um, 
the layouts and everything from four demonstrators. So I think it's a, I think it's about 12 or 16 projects you get each month. Okay, let me show you some cards. This is what you tend to think of more with regard to the art gallery. And I love the fact that with, now this is just stamp, sync, and paper. There's none of the actual designer series paper on this one. Let me bring this down now. This one, again, uses the background paper, um, the, the B side, as we often call it. But look how nice the die cuts. I mean, you just stamp them and die cut them out. But there's also these really fun little dies here for greetings that are really outstanding because they're almost like a little mini postage stamp. This gold ribbon is also a part of the suite. And then, this is a great example. Some of these are swaps. Some of these are my creations. Um, look how they've put that gold leafing on there. This is somebody else. And then layering the ribbon with the, um, with the um, greeting there. This is a right, and see, the thing is with this paper, there's so, the designer paper, there's so many different colors in it that you can really go in a lot of different directions. There's the So Saffron here. There is the Pool Party here. Um, there's Pool Party again there. Can't really set anything else. Um, let's see. Look at that. It also has this um, Mary Merlot. I used quite a bit of that in my scrapbook pages. And then, um, and see how just a hint of that gold uh, leafing really does a lot. And then this one, again, uses the pool party. And that's that, I think when you stamp these, these flower stamps, tone on tone, I think it's a really pretty look. And then here's another one that has a little bit of that gold leafing. And this is the gold, there's gold leafing there, and this is a gold overlay. So I didn't even show you that, but there is a gold overlay piece that you can get that lines up with, oh, I've got two of the same card there. You can see here where it lines up with one of the patterns of the paper, where it, it ends up, you lay that separate acetate sheet with the gold over it, and it outlines your flowers and stuff. So really cool paper, really cool suite. Again, the paper, this designer series paper is only available through tomorrow. So if you do not have this paper yet, I highly recommend it. Has a lot to recommend it. This also, the, um, the gold overlay, no, it's called gold acetate sheet. I believe these are actually on sale. And here, um, I don't know who did this swap but she laid it over one of those, uh, the B sides of the paper. Um, this one uses just the embossing folder with some um, really pretty sponging on there. And then um, this one again uses that piece of, um, that So Saffron piece is really pretty. Has almost like a little mosaic pattern on it, but they all have that very kind of brush stroke look on the paper. Um, some of the paper has these really bold artwork flowers, but look how you just kind of layer them up and they end up looking so pretty. Here again is stamping the just the, the flower. And instead of tone on tone, this is just a soft, I think this is blushing bride on top of white. So there's just a lot to recommend this suite. And this was a bookmark card that we made um, at retreat in the spring. So there's a lot to recommend this suite and most of it you can get in the new annual catalog, but the two elements that you cannot get, number one is the uh, bundle price. So instead of getting 10% off on the stamps and dies, um, you do pay the full 22 and 34. Um, still a great deal, but um, if, you want that, if you want this um, bundle, I would recommend that you get it now because um, it's only available through tomorrow at the bundle price. After tomorrow, you can only get it at the um, individual price. So what are we gonna do with this today? We are going to use some of the paper. So this is what I have left of an open pack. Now I have two more packages of paper. So what I did was I went through my scrap pieces here and I pulled several that we're gonna work with today. Again, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous colors. 
Yeah, you're right, Mary. The gold overlays, that's the, that's the name I was looking for, overlay. They really do bling up uh, the cards with very little effort. So, um, so let's see where we get on. We're going to layer these up with some of, I've got several card bases that I've pulled and I've got several pieces of designer paper I've pulled. It has such a great color palette. But I've got two little pieces of four by three basic white, and that's the art part that we're gonna do. And let's see how we get on with that today. I'm actually not gonna use the dies, I don't think. Um, I may end up using them on the greeting. And we're gonna use this foam mat because we are going to stamp, and we're going to stamp photopolymer stamps, and whenever you're stamping in photopolymer, you definitely need to have this foam mat underneath you. I am gonna put this under there because I think I'm going to need it. And we are going to play with the new soft pastels. These are the new pastels that Stampin' Up! is offering in the new annual catalog, and you do get nine colors. And they are only, I think it's nine, three, oh, eight colors, but they're nine dollars. That's where I had the nine. So very, very um, affordable, great for new stampers because they're super easy to use, great for avid stampers because there's a lot of fun techniques that you can do with them. And I'm gonna do a little technique with you here today. And we are going to stamp in Versamark. So this is actually an old technique called poppin' pastels. And you ink up your uh, stamp with Versamark. This is what we use when we, um, what do you call it? When you heat emboss. But I'm not gonna heat emboss with this. I am going to stamp it. And it leaves just a pale watermark. And I don't know if you can even see it there, but it's kind of glistening. And so I'm gonna do one with this flower, and then I'm gonna do one with this larger flower. I thought we'd just kind of play with two different ones and see what we come up with. So on this one, I'm going to stamp the flower here, and then we are going to stamp the, oh, it's sticking, the stem and the leaves. Now, this is much larger than what the space that I have left here, which is why I wanted to, um, well, it's actually going to fit in my little three by four piece. I didn't think it would, but it is. Okay, we're in good shape. Now, this is where the magic is going to begin because now we have this nice sticky surface because Versamark is um, a sticky ink. And that's why we like to use it for heat embossing because it holds your embossing powder ever so nicely. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little palette over here of color. And I'm going to do that with my um, pastels. And I'm going to take my Take Your Pick tool and I'm going to take the little spatula in. And I'm going to lift, um, let's see, let's lift this one first. We're gonna use one of these yellows, and you can see I'm just scraping, I think I'm in camera, I'm scraping a little bit of this chalk. This is pastel, it's art quality, artist quality pastel chalk. I think that's crushed curry. And I'm also going to take a little bit of this. This is Poppy Parade, one of my favorite colors. And you know, Poppy Parade's light, very light counterpart is uh, Petal Pink, my all-time favorite Stampin' Up! color. And both of those colors are in the paper for the art gallery. So I'm not going to use purple. I'm going to use just this red. I do need a green. Now we have two greens in the pastels. And the green I need to come up a little bit on my camera. You have Granny Apple Green, which is super bright, and then we have Mossy Meadow. And Mossy Meadow is definitely more the green that's in this designer series paper. So I think I'm gonna do that. And then, hey Barb, I'm glad you're here. And Kim, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, you thought you missed me, but I thank you for sharing my video, I appreciate it. I came on late today 
because it's we've still got the grandkids here from England and today is their last day. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up this color here. This is my little palette of color and I'm gonna use my sponge daubers. Now, this is a brand new pack. They're $5 for five and I recommend that you get a package of these to use just with this type of, um, to use with your pastels because I think you're gonna be a lot happier with it. You know what? I think I'm gonna use some of this blue as well. Grab one more color here. Let's use some of that blue because that blue is in this paper. And I think we're gonna make a little bit of magic with our art piece and then we're gonna combine it with the papers and let's see where we go. Okay, so I'm going to take my sponge dauber and I'm gonna pick up some of that green and I'm going to just start dabbing and look how it picks up all of that nice Versamark that's underneath there. So what happens is it's kind of like magic and it causes your stamped image to appear. Now I'm not being too, too fussed about what's happening with the flower underneath there because I'm gonna add more color. And you can see how if you just add more powder, more color, it just gets deeper and deeper. So you can just keep adding color and then I'm going to just tap, tap, tap the excess and voila. Now I'm gonna come in, I think on this one, I'm gonna come in and actually gonna make some blue flowers. So let's see what we can do with this blue. Ooh, this is something that you can just have a lot of fun and play with and see what kinds of color combinations you can come up with because you do essentially have like a little paint palette here. Now this is actually, yeah, that's a flower underneath there. So we're just picking up, you know, what's happening is the, um, the Versamark is holding and grabbing the pastel chalk. And the nice thing about this is we're going to wipe off the excess but to be honest, it will kind of fix itself. And so although you could spray this with a fixative that you could get from an art supply store, you could spray it with adhesive when you're done. If you feel, it's not adhesive, what am I saying? You could spray it with hairspray and it will set it. It'd be very, very light with it. Um, or you can just leave it. You know, I think those are actually more like petals down here. So let's add a little bit more blue down here. You can just leave it. And as long as you kind of wipe off the excess, it stays pretty nicely. So now I have these blue flowers because this is an artsy set. You know, there are, well, there are some blue flowers in nature, but not too terribly many. So now I have this very, very pretty image. Now, if I want to, let me just show you what will happen. I can keep going over this with this mossy meadow. I could also, I could, let's just live dangerously here. I could pick up a little bit of this uh, granny apple green and mix it with the mossy meadow. And let's just see if that won't brighten that up and maybe make it a little bit darker or maybe actually a little bit brighter. It's a very relaxing, um, very relaxing technique to do. So I think that's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is take my paper towel and I'm just gonna wipe it. And you see how you have that nice soft haze around it? So there's my little art piece. Poppin' Pastels is the name of this technique. So let's come in now and let's bring in some more of our green to outline, or not outline, add color to our leaves and get them really showing off here so we can find where our, um, where our petals are because this is that big, big, bold flower. 
And I'm just gonna go ahead and mix these greens a little bit while I'm working. And again, these are just the sponge daubers. I do recommend using sponge daubers that are dedicated to your pastel chalks because otherwise you'll end up having ink that will transfer from here onto your um, car. Oh, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can, um, Candy was trying to be efficient there. <laughs> Candy is usually not very good on efficiency, so I end up wiping green across there, which I didn't want, but let's come in here with, ah, uh, yes. Let's come in here with some nice, bright poppy parade, and I don't think we're gonna notice my little mishap. And I think what we're going to do is if we just really, really bring that in here, I'll end up covering that up. And then you can see how if you use leave it light, it's more like, um, pastel uh, petal pink up there. But I'm gonna bring in much deeper color down here at the bottom. Leave it a little bit lighter up at the top. Let's see if we can get some real depth of color down here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of that yellow. That's why I had that yellow there. So let's bring in, I think this is crushed curry. Let's see if we can't create a little bit of an orange tone here, because that is in the paper for sure. Yeah, you can see how that orangey, yellowy red is coming through ever so nicely. And then, let's just add a little bit more of that Poppy Parade to make it really, really, really nice. Now, these are pastel chalks, so you're not going to get a bold color like you would get with your um, Stampin' Blends. These are much softer in color, and that is by design. They are pastel chalks. So I think they are just a lovely, lovely look. So let's move our paint palette over here, and I can just wash that off with water. I can put my little chalks back in here. You can see how they're gonna last for a long time. Now you could, uh, I would not recommend for this technique, picking them up and coloring them, scribbling them on your um, Versamark because it would just, it would be too much at one spot and you would have more trouble blending it. So there are my um, pastel chalks. Let's move my little color palette here out of the way. Let's see what we can do to layer this up. We may need to trim these down a little bit. Let's see. So we've done our stamping, we've done our coloring, and now we're going to play. So let's see what kind of a background we want on this. You can see what happens when you put that nice bright color underneath there. So we could do something like this, or we could go with, that's quite nice too, bringing out the blue again. We could go, this one brings out, that's eh, probably not the right color, but let's look at the other side. The other side gives you that really, really soft look. This one is really lovely too. That's kind of, looks like it's kind of growing out of there. But look how you could also do that with these blue flowers. So this is where this paper is just super fun to work with. I think, did I already try out this piece? Yes. So let's try the B side. We typically call these in the stamping world, we call this the A side, because that's where all the pretty artwork is. But look at that B side. That's got a lot of pretty there too. So let's see what looks here. Mm, that looks pretty too. So I would definitely love to hear any kind of opinions out there. Um, that's really kind of a cool look as well. So lots of fun things that, so I can see a little shadow where I had left that, where I dragged that green in there. So um, this is where we can go. And I'm thinking that we might go just bold 
like that. And we might go, let's see, soft over here. So we have kind of a contrasting, two really contrasting designs. Pink on the blue DSP. So you like the pink on this one. Now that's a different look too. That's really kind of, I like that. Uh, I like that, um, I like that contrast. You might've meant this one, but I think you mean this one. That contrast is actually really cool looking. So that would definitely be an option there. And if we went that way, we might go with something softer over here. Um, let's see, over here. Now the one color in this also that has retired, that if you're lucky enough to still have that goes really pretty with this is um, Pretty Peacock. So that is, um, that is in there as well. Ooh, look at that. That's a really pretty look too. So we could do something like that. Okay, let me get some card bases and, ooh, oh, well now, <laughs> well now, look at that. I need to get that piece out. Let me grab my scraps again and see. I forgot about that nice, really bold blue. That looks really pretty behind there. It's almost like a cobalt blue. I think it's this piece of paper and it's another part of it. So look at that. That's kind of cool. Is it? Yep, that's it. So we could go on that. Um, is kind of a cool look as well. And then this is the other one. These were the ones I didn't think I was gonna use, but now that we've actually done this, that's kind of a cool look too. I kinda of like that. Um, so I'm gonna kinda of wait to see if anybody else is going to weigh in. And we could do something like this and go with much more of the oranges and the greens, real warm colors. I think I'm gonna take this out because it's got a little bit of powder on it. That's a cool look, I'm liking that. And then if we went in this direction over here, let's see if maybe if we put this so saffron underneath there, I'm kind of liking that. So our other option would be to bring in some, you know, although this has um, Poppy Parade, I think it's actually because I added so much of that crushed curry, I think it's actually looking a lot more orangey. Now the other direction I could go, no, that definitely doesn't work. That looks kind of nice if you wanted to just kind of stay with the blues, but I kind of like the contrast. Um, so Jill, you're liking the oranges. Yeah, I think that's a really pretty look. So I think we're gonna go with that. And um, while I have things out here, let's just, tidy a few things up. Let's kind of think about how we might also add a few little bits and pieces. So we do have this gold ribbon is part of the suite and really kind of dresses things up a little bit. We could go in a totally different direction and go twine, which is much more casual. Um, so I'll see if anybody weighs in. Um, Okay, so Kim says stop, they look perfect. <laughs> okay, I like that. Let's trim this up a little bit and see how we get on. You know, when I was heading upstairs, the kids were getting ready to go and, um, and see my daughter and Griff saw me coming up the stairs and he started to come up the stairs and I thought, oh, Two and a half year old in my studio space could be really interesting. But, you know, granddaddy was telling him about cars, and then that was the end of his interest in coming upstairs with grandma. Okay, let's just make sure all of that powder. You do have to be a little bit mindful with the powder that, you know, when it, you'll end up with bits and pieces of, it, pieces of it on your work surface, and you won't realize it's there. So you do want to just kind of wipe things off a little bit so that you don't have residuals of color that you don't intend. I honestly kind of like that little bit of yellow peeking out there at the bottom. So let's trim this 
to, it's already at four, it's at four by six, and that's how, I actually did a paper share with four by six pieces, and this is what's left over. So let me come up here to five and a quarter so that we shave off that end of it. You can see why I think this paper is really, really worth having. I think it's gorgeous paper, absolutely gorgeous paper. Love the colors in it, love the, it has so many different colors. And that's why, one of the reasons I think it's great for scrapbooking is because you can go in a lot of different directions with it and not have everything looking too matchy-matchy because most of the time when I have scrapbooking that I'm going to do, I say I need to do, I want to do, um, I have a lot of um, photographs from like, you know, when my kids were young and I wasn't scrapbooking because I was living life with young children and homeschooling and that just was not part of my world. But I want to scrap, there's some of those things I want to scrapbook now. Oh, now look at there. Look at there, that's looking very nice. And um, so I didn't, you know, I think that you photograph differently maybe. I think you take photographs differently once you start scrapbooking because you kind of realize what you'd like to do and you think about those things a little bit more. Um, but, you know, we have just a lot of um, casual photos with all kinds of different people and places and... Um, so I think these patterns and these colors worked really well because they're like having a they're like having art in the background. So I might go with some pearls. I think the pearls might look nice. Um, what do we think about these champagne rhinestones? I think might look nice here. So I think I'm going to keep those out and we'll see what we think. Now the other direction we could go is those golden ones on. Ooh, even those blue. Keep those out. Those are the holiday rhinestones. Probably my all-time favorite. I shouldn't say all-time. Current favorite of the um, embellishments. There's also, though, these artistic... What are these called? Artistic... Something artistic. And I tell you, these rhinestones... These aren't rhinestones. These um, sequins, adhesive back. Thank you very much sequins go with a lot as well and they have a subtle look so i think that's also a possibility there's a random die cut in there i will just leave it okay so let's see where we get on you know there'll be one more look see oh that's so pretty it's so soft but look at there man it brings out that okay stay on track candy now, I think I am going to add a little bit of, I have a greeting. I was going to make both of these into congratulations cards. I think we're going to do the greeting last because I think I'm going to run it through the die, that kind of cool postage stamp die, once we figure this out. So I think I'm actually going to leave, these might seem to be a little bit large, but I think I'm going to leave them that way. Um, and then we have a little bit of leeway to play with some embellishments and some ribbon and things. So let's see about grab this here. You know, some people were talking about um, which, you know, Stampin' Up! Adhesive is their favorite. And I honestly, I use them all. I use them all a lot. Some people have had a little bit of a challenge learning to use the Stampin' Seal because it takes a much lighter touch than our previous um, snail seal, or snail adhesive, it wasn't snail seal, <laughs> it's kind of a mouthful. Um, but I do find that in addition to just having a light touch with this, um, this silicone mat is the key, because sometimes you'll go to start using it and nothing is happening. And if you will just use this it gets it going oh now look at there see candy just got distracted because oh it's not peeking out enough oh that's a really pretty piece too okay like i said this paper is just so fun to use and again it is only available through tomorrow it has not sold out yet so um, a number of the papers have my favorite paper absolute favorite paper in the spring catalog 
was the um, True Love, the black and white one. I did a lot with it. I think I did two different classes with it, loads of projects with it. Love that black and white paper. It has sold out. So it's no longer available. But these, this one is. So I think we are going to just do these kind of um, a little bit um, on the diagonal. And these are actually, you know, I think that sometimes we want to add lots and lots of things, but particularly when you have kind of a fun uh, technique, I think the technique needs to kind of stand on its own. Mm. Hmm. Well, we could go there. I'm going to let you guys tell me what you think if I should go horizontal or portrait or landscape on this one because I think it kind of goes either direction. Um, although I could actually do that on both of them. Didn't plan on that, but that kind of looks cool too. So tell me what you think if you like the if you like the landscape or if you like the portrait. They both have a lot to recommend them. And then I think we're gonna use just a little wee bit of this gold ribbon. And let's get the mini cut and emboss machine. The little mini boss. my big boss right off onto the floor, which I don't want to test what happens when you do that. But I think what I'm going to do, hey Susan, I'm glad you're here. We'll take you late. I came on late today. I'm just doing grandma time. Okay, so Kim is saying landscape. That's what I was thinking too. You know, my original plan was this, but then you get to laying it down and you're like, well, actually, and that kind of allows these, these, um, flowers to peek out. So I think we're gonna go landscape on both of them. And because I have put my dimensionals a little bit not towards, sometimes people put them all the way on the edge. And to me, what happens is it sags in the middle. Also, by doing it this way, if I wanna tuck something underneath after I lay it down, it gives me the um, capacity to do that quite easily. I think I'm gonna do it down here like so. That's looking very nice. So Susan, you're coming in light. We have been playing with the new pastel chalks today. And that is how we got these lovely looks with the art gallery uh, stamps and the, I think it's called art, well, it's probably called something art gallery something, <laughs> the designer series paper. So, do I want that bit in there or do I want that? I think I'm gonna go in the center on this one and not try to include that other blue flower. So we have two slightly different looks here. Now, I think we are going to get a little bit of scrap and run it through for some greetings. So let's see what we can come up with. Think that we're going to go with a scrap of, we could go with, ooh, that's kind of nice. Now do you see that's a much dark, see how that's a deeper version of the um, So Saffron? We could go with, um, this is crushed curry. We could go a little softer and this is, I think I like that better, this is um, bumblebee. I think that might be just the ticket. We could go just the same color. So I'm gonna let you guys tell me what you think. If we should go with Bumblebee, or if we should go with So Saffron for our greeting that we're gonna stamp on this one. And then over here, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we think about, there's Pear Pizzazz, not quite the right green. There's Old Olive, which I think honestly might work. Again, the, they, there's just so many colors that, that work with this whole suite. Here's going tone on tone, or I say tone on tone, not really, bringing in the um, soft sea foam from there. What I wanted to see was how would it look, do I have a scrap of, ooh, 
there's the new um, Evening Evergreen. I think that's too dark. Do I not have a scrap of Mossy Meadow? Yeah, that's not quite right. Okay, so Susan's liking the Bumblebee. I think that's a good call, Susan. And then I'm trying to find a scrap of moss, ah, Mossy Meadow right there. So I'm gonna use one of these for the greeting here. You guys tell me what you think. We're gonna do Mossy Meadow over here. We're gonna run this through our, our Baby Boss machine. We have Big Boss and we have Baby Boss. And let's see, we are going to use, this is what I mean about the, um, the dies. These two dies remind me of a little post-it, like a little long skinny postage stamp. And that's the one I'm wanting to use. So let's do this one in Bumblebee and I'll see what people are saying about this one over here. And let's run this Bumblebee paper through our Baby Boss machine and see what we come up with. You know, that's the fun. I think what, what makes stamping so addictive, and it is a positive addiction, <laughs> but it is a little addictive, let's be honest, is that it is so fun to just experiment and see where you get on. So there. Should have a thin die adapter in here somewhere. One, two, one, two, two. That's my embossing. Okay, here we go. And I think we're going. There and there. Nobody has weighed in. Oh, this paper's too wide. Let me just whack it with some scissors. I don't need it to be straight or anything. So I don't have anybody that's weighed in on the greens, which means I'm just going to make my own decision on that if nobody gives me an, an opinion. So let's... Have they been experimenting with daisy garden backgrounds? Oh, you have been. Oh, and you're having fun. Yay. Well, that's good to hear, Susan. Experimenting with a stamp and having fun is part of what is just... Oh, I love that. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do. And maybe I'll just run two of them through here, but I'm thinking maybe this darker green is going to be a better fit. Let's see. The nice thing with this die is you just need a little scrap to run through there. So let's see. Ah, Mossy Meadow. Susan is weighing in. I'm with you, girlfriend. Mossy Meadow, I think it is. Now, where did I put my other plate? Hmm. Be right in front of me. There. Oh, here we go. There we go. So this little this little baby boss machine is really handy. And I will tell you a couple of things about it. It's a $60 purchase, which is, yeah, you, know, you might think is a little bit much, but it actually um, actually is very, very useful. Um, so, Kim, yeah, you lost me for a while. I think it's just the weather. Um, the, the question was whether we wanted to go with the mossy meadow or we wanted to go with the soft sea foam for the little greeting. But I think I'm going to run it through through both of them, and then we'll make a decision. I think that's going to be an easier way to handle this. So, yeah, I think that the reason I'm going, I'm going quiet on you is because the um, storms that we're having here. Um, which are kind of intermittent throughout the city. I know um, I was talking to my son that lives on uh, closer to the downtown area, and he said they got a lot of rain this morning. We didn't. We had a nice, nice morning where we could take the kids up to the park, and but we had a lot of rain last night, so it's kind of intermittent around the city. Okay, Baby Boss is going to go this way. And we're going to put him away. I will tell you, if you're a demonstrator, this is a demonstrator item and it's called the insulated lunch bag and it fits your baby boss perfectly. This is a demonstrator only item. You know, one of the many reasons to be a demonstrator and there are probably, I could probably come up with 20 while right off the top of my head, 
But there are some demonstrator only items that are really fun. So that is just a really neat way to store and also kind of, um, carry my cut and emboss machine. Now I need to put that little guy away. So I know what happens with dies that are left on the table. They get scooped up with cardstock and then yeah, bad things happen. So Kim, yeah, you got that bag for your baby boss. It's awesome. Okay, so I think we're gonna use one of the, yeah, this kind of gets lost. We need this one. And um, for lack of a better idea, I'm going to just use Night of Navy ink. And I pulled out my greeting and mounted it. And once I find my stamps, <laughs> here they are. I was trying to clear my space here a bit. I decided I was gonna, I needed some congratulations cards for various accomplishments and achievements. And I thought this would be a good one. So actually I probably should use, yeah, I think Night of Navy is gonna work better than black. I could use Tuxedo Black. But I think the Night of Navy. Let's push these over here and grab my little mat. I will tell you when you're using these, um, when you're using these photopolymer stamps, when it's just words, a lot of times you don't need the mat underneath you. But surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, it can actually make a pretty big difference to getting a really crisp, clear image even on your words. Now I'm intentionally going down to one side of that so that I can maybe put a little embellishment on the end. I think that's gonna look kind of cool. Okay, so there we have, congratulations there, congratulations there, these are coming along nicely. So do just a few little top up things and then we have two super simple cards made with some gorgeous designer paper, beautiful stamps and we used the new pastel chalks. So um, this could be for any, you know, it's a great way to get a lot of colors for a new stamper and to be able to do something very artsy and very creative and um, very much a, a technique, but still be a new stamper. But I think, like I said, I've been stamping a long time. I will say this was something that I did when I first started stamping because we did have chalks back then in the day. I stamped for several years before I jumped in as a demonstrator. Kind of wish looking back I had jumped in before I did, but I didn't, um, maybe it just wasn't the right time. And I have, I will say, once I joined, I have never looked back. I have never paid full price for my stamps since I joined. And that alone is brilliant. And then I have been very blessed to be able to develop a full-on business, which has just been so fun, you know? I was the stay-at-home mom. Homeschooled my kids, pastor's wife, everything kind of centered around home and family. And it still does, to a degree. But I get to have a career kind of at my, <laughs> in my senior years, which is just fun. Lots and lots of fun. That is gonna go there like so. Hmm. Probably should have stuck it down yet. Let's see if we can raise that up a little bit. No, actually I think it was okay. Leave it alone, Candy. leave it alone. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, let's put a little bit of adhesive on this guy here. See how that's, sometimes it gets where it doesn't want to feed and that's where you just touch it to your adhesive mat and then voila. You are back in business. So this is going to go here. They're very different cards. I like them both. We did just a few little subtle differences, not only in the colors, but you can see where I, I uh, brought this one over to the side here. And on this one, on the blue card, I centered it. I think honestly, I kind of like the centering, but I think maybe over here, we will just add a little bit of ribbon. Ooh, and that might be just the ticket. 
So let's see. So Susie, you like them both. I'm so glad. Glad to hear it. Now, I will say the mini uh, glue dots are just the best for most ribbons. Every once in a while you have a ribbon, but even, even the, um, the mini many glue dots don't work great on, and then you have to break out the uh, tear and tape. But for the most part, this is perfect. And you see how because my, my dimensionals are way um, kind of towards the center, I have plenty of room to put that little, that little tab of ribbon, which I think is kind of a nice look. And do we want to put the gold ribbon on this one or not? Let's try a little tab and see what we think. These are our artsy cards. Now, you guys tell me if you think I should leave it more straight or kind of fanned out. Do we like that fanned out? It's more prominent. I could do a little piece here, I think. I think I might kind of like that. Maybe I'm just gonna leave it off. Now comes the little final touch. So what is the uh, consensus? Pull all these little bits and pieces of paper aside here. What is the consensus on, do we want to add just a couple of pearls here? That would be one option, little pops of white. Or we could add the holiday rhinestones, which I am really, really liking. These navy blue, Knight of Navy ones, is a cool look just to add a little bit of sparkle and shine. Um, or we could go with a couple of these soft, um, the soft little pool party ones. Okay, fan out and no ribbon on the blue. Okay, Kim, I'm, I'm on the same mind. I'm, I'm in agreement, total agreement with you there. We could go with this or even, I think there's some of these that are a little softer. These are Mango Melody. These are so saffron. So we could pull in these yellow ones that are subtle, very subtle. So I'm gonna kind of wait and see what people say here. So these are kind of different choices we have for the um, blue card. Now let's think about our orangey card. And we could go with these Calypso card. Oh, those are really pretty on there. We could go with the Mango Melody ones, which are kind of a softer version of this. We could go with the Champagne Rhinestones. They have that little bit of a peachy orange to them. Um, and we could even go with these are the, um, let me pull this off, because that is gonna help us see. These are the Crushed Curry ones. That's kind of a nice look. Oh, and look at there. Well, no, that's not the right green. So we could use the green, but it's really not the right shade. Yeah, you see, this is what it looks like when you put those navy blue. Okay, now Kim likes, we've got a couple of votes for the navy rhinestones. And then we've got a vote for the um, yellow. Now I think what Kim is saying, this might be kind of interesting. Let's see if we take one of these and then put the little blue rhinestone on top. Is that too busy or is that just right? That's kind of a cool look too, but it's a little bit bling. I mean, I like bling and it's a little bit like, um, almost like a two-tone bling there. I think I might like one over the other. So I'm gonna wait and see what people say. We could go with that and I'd probably put a couple more on there. And um, I think over here, we're probably gonna go with these um, self-adhesive artistry blooms. That's the name of these. Oh, look at there. Artistry blooms on the, um, where'd my pick a tool go? Take your pick. I never can't remember what to call that thing. I always wanna call it pick a tool, but it's take your pick. And it's here somewhere because I used it for the chalks and now I can't lay my hand to it. Did I, oh, did I put it away? Of course not. Of course not, Candy, you did not put it away. Whoopsie, just dropped my stamp pad. Let's see, can I find 
take your pick. I could do it like I was designing in here, so it's really a wreck. Well, I'm not finding it easily, so it's going to be my fingers. Let's go here. And then another little one like that. I'm liking that a lot. Oh, one yellow and then two blue. Oh, that's an idea, Kim. Let's see. So if we do one of these yellow, because I have laid um, on these uh, self-adhesive um, sequins, I have laid the, the um, I think that took some of the sequin off. Um, I have laid tiny pearls, the white ones, on top of them, and they actually look really cool. I think I actually ended up taking some of the finish off that one, so we'll move that one. And do like that. I do like those colors. Oh, I was supposed to do, <laughs> I'm doing the wrong one. They actually look good though. That is the beauty of this whole suite is everything just kind of working together. So let's try a little yellow up here. There's the softer, definitely a softer color. And let's try a couple of rhinestones down here and see what we think. So there is our blue card, and there is our orange card. I'm kinda liking them. I think we've done some pretty good design work here. Let me pull these up a little bit, because I think I keep pulling them down in the wrong part of the camera. I think we did well. What do you guys think about popping pastels? Think you might try your hand at that? Again, it's really, um, you know, if you have a Versamark pad, you're already halfway there. You get eight colors of these lovely, lovely um, chalks, and they're only $9. So I think that this is a great buy. It's also a really nice gift. So if you have a crafty friend, um, this is a really nice gift. It's even in a cute little box. Be easy to, to gift someone. So um, there we go, ladies and gentlemen our pastel chalks and we did it with art gallery don't forget that the art gallery designer series paper is only available through tomorrow and then it will no longer be available it's still in stock so it might sell out today so i would recommend that if you want to get some that you get it today and not tomorrow because tomorrow's the last day i never like to wait till the last day on something like that i'm a last minute lucy but when it comes to stamps and supplies I've learned the hard way that if you wait till the last day, some of those things have sold out that you didn't think were going to sell out, and then you're disappointed. So um, I like to go ahead and grab a hold of those things while I can. So very pretty cards today, ladies. I think you did a great job of helping me design these. They were a lot of fun to make. So I am going to love you and leave you for today and my grandkids will be home in about 30 minutes so uh, they went to see my daughter and her kids and um, to say one last goodbye because they do leave tomorrow and I can't believe they're leaving tomorrow it's gone so quickly so those of you who are coming in later or aren't as familiar with me we have our youngest son um, lives in the UK in the north of England with his wife and two babies both born there so we have had precious little time with them because you know when you live overseas that's just the way it is and um i've said many times this is exactly what we did to our parents when we were uh, alex was the same age as my husband was when we moved to the uk back in the 80s and then we were there nine years never thought twice about you know the effect it had on grandparents because uh, you're just you're young you're living your life you know and Alex, who's over there now, was actually born in England. And um, so his, young, his two children have been born there. And I'm already plotting when is our next trip gonna be. We were supposed to have gone last year in the autumn. Uh, Felicity was, was born in September. We were going to try to be there around then. Of course, with COVID and everything, that just wasn't possible. And um, it's been really interesting with their trip here because when the UK was on lockdown, they were on lockdown a lot heavier than we were. Um, and of course, it's a small island in, in one, I mean, it's, there's a lot of population, there's a lot of, a lot of things there, but it's a relatively small amount of land space. 
and they are an island nation. And um, so at the height of the pandemic, they had a period of several months where they couldn't go out at all except to go outside once a day for exercise. You could go out for 45 minutes and that was it. So our little, our little grandchildren have seen very few people in their lives. They've seen each other, their family unit. And because they were young, they could have a bubble. You, you know, you could have a bubble. So you could have a couple of other people in your bubble group that you were um, all mixing um, air with, as it were. Um, but they haven't been around a lot of people. So this has been a really interesting trip for them. Just even just getting here on the airplanes and everything. Uh, but they've done great. They've been real champs. And my husband and I are, like I said, plotting when we are going to pay our next visit. Uh, to get in grandma and granddaddy time with our little ones. So again, I will be here Thursday for simple and stepped up stamping. And in the meantime, make sure that you get the art gallery designer series paper. I think that's the name of it, but it's part of that suite before it's gone forever. And um, grab a hold of the bundle if you don't already have it because that 10% savings is not in the new catalog. And um, I will see you Thursday at my usual time of two o'clock. Thanks again for being here. I would love for you to share my video. It helps me so much. Take care and God bless.